All right, so this is going to be a little review on our new van that we just bought last year. We've had it just under, under a year now. It's the Swift Black Edition 686. Um, bit of a mess because we've come back from Spain and now we're at Twinwood. Um, so we haven't had much chance to sort the van out. Um, this is the 130 brake horsepower um, one which has got the Euro 5 engine. The only downside with this engine is that it's now got a timing belt on this one. Our previous one had a um, timing chain. So with the timing belt, obviously, we have to get it changed. The engine's really, really good on these. They're quite powerful. Never have any problem keeping up with the motorway. It's also got a six-speed gearbox, which is really economical. And it's quite nice for that. The Black Edition, I, I quite like the look of it. It's The Black Cab is quite nice. They did do the Swift Explorer, I think, or Escape, which is the blue front cabs, which, again, looked really nice. But it's much better to have the black or blue fronts rather than just the complete white. It's got the normal pull-out awning, which most vans have. On this one, which is probably standard with most um, the vans, it's got the gas connection for the barbecue. Another great feature. Got the two vents for the fridge. And going further down, um, it's just a gas box here. I'll try and get it open with one hand. Oh, managed to do it. So two gas bottles easily fit in here. And the, the regulator on this, which is this green button, is a crushed regulator. So you have to push the green button to get it up and running. And if you knock it or have an accident, um, it shuts the gas down. Although, realistically, everyone knows that you should really turn your gas off. But if you forget and you have an accident, it will shut it down. Um, and this compartment is quite a big compartment um, where I'm hoping to get a socket in here and external lights strips coming off of here because it's right underneath the awning area. water connection which is to an internal tank which I'll show you later so underneath is the waste connection I hope you can see it right so there's a there's our waste pipe here um, and it normally comes um, along and there's a metal arm comes down here for the waste connection so you got it you got it the waste connection here it just shows you up there it's the waste connection um, but that metal arm's screwed into a bit of plywood with four screws it's only an inch inch screws um, and it came off while we was driving along quite dangerous really um, very bad poor design for Swift on that so we're gonna have to get that redesigned himself um, they shouldn't really have let that gone into production like that it's dangerous to other users drive you drivers on the back we've got the bike rack with this one which come with the van good bike racks this takes three bikes we would like to get um, the tow bar bike rack on one day because the um, the weight these can take it says they can take i think 75 kilograms or something but we have had these pulled through before in the van so i don't particularly like them but that's what we've got at the moment and um, we've got ladders as well and on top we've got a top box at the back here you've got the Truma, this is for the hot water and the, and the heating system, that's the vent for that. Um, we've got an electrical box for the battery and the electrical supply. And I'll just show you, it's another pretty poor design really. There's um, a complete plastic trim around the edge of this compartment, so you can't get your fingers in there to open the compartment anywhere, and there's no handles here or anywhere so there's no way of opening the, the actual box so when you unlock it it'll probably come open now easily but normally when you unlock it you can't open it there's no way of opening it and if it's got a good suction it's quite painful um, you have to sort of wiggle the key to get it out, out open another really poor design because you can end up breaking the lock or breaking your keys um, so i'm going to have to cut, do a cut out on this so you can get your fingers in here to open it up or put something on it Toilet compartment, standard, standard cassette toilet. I won't put it out. And then they supplied an external shower point. You want to wash your dogs or anything? Comes with a Category Two immobiliser. We've had the Cat One fitted for insurance purposes. Um, the front doors have got nice, good, big pockets. So I'll go and show you the inside, um, that's most of the outside done.
so this is the rear lounge area which turns into our bed this is our double bed area as well and um, one of the main reasons why we bought the van this van apart from the fact that you can take the six the four seat belts is that we can have this as a lounge area and we can set it up as a bed um, so this is the centre table which you can take apart and you have all the windows so it's quite nice for the amount of light that comes in and it's got a roof window as well so when not in use the table stores way that over there on the left um, and I've added a few extras we put a nice little table over here because this is where our seat sit um, if we're sitting in here watching telly and obviously bottle of water at night I've made another little table over here a little shelf over here this is a, a collapsible one um, which has got a little tiny pull out piece to hold it up um, I made this collapsible obviously because if you end up sitting here you can end up hitting your head on that and over this side I've got a nice little one for where Sean sits he's got a little tiny one to put his drink on when he's watching telly and again it's small enough there to not be able to catch yourself I've not had any problems yet all the lighting within the van it's little LED spots or you've got the overhead top spots which are quite nice these are not the ones with the USB one I don't know if you've seen some of these some of them got USB connections on the side so my, one of my mods I want to do is put cigarette lighter connections 12 volt connections in the top so we can plug things like his laptop in or mobile phones and stuff so we want to put one of them in each corner but at the moment both corners have got the lights but over in my corner where I sit there's nothing so I've got to fit all that in myself um, they do have a top shelf unit up here which is quite strange why they just put a shelf there and they didn't just make that a cupboard it seems like a bit like they're cutting costs there because it's absolutely pointless because you can't put too much up there because when you're driving along it all falls off so why they didn't put two doors up there like I say probably saved a few pennies on that um, but most of the cupboards are pretty good the latches uh, are pretty strong they do hold quite well um, they do have quite nice space for, you, for your gear I've got two more cupboards over here one of the other things this one's got a shelving unit I was about to say this one's got the shelving unit um, but have a look at this one I can see this one didn't and I had to put this in myself and I've had to do this in all the other cupboards because that's probably I think the only one that's got the shelf on the left hand side so again another penny pinching thing not a piece of, piece of wood so you've got a shelf in each one um, probably saved themselves two quid out of the scrap bits of wood they've got um, another little shelf we put up here as well just because it's handy to put your bits and pieces near the TV um, we've got our TV area and this didn't come with the van, it's, it's by the separate, this is the Abtec TV which I'll do a separate review on, these are absolutely brilliant a lot of money, people moan about how much they cost but really they are worth it so we're quite happy with that down here we have the electrical mains connection we've got a 12 volt air wall, it's an over top air wall on the roof which we very rarely use um, there's a cigarette lighter connection which we use for plugging the telly in the telly's permanently run on 12 volts, we don't run it on the 240 240, the battery's always been charged somehow. And, and this I've installed, this is one of the USB connections, giving you two USB outputs, because there's no, it just gives you extra power over it. Now I do need to put a switch on this, because this is permanently running off the battery, um, which I don't like when we're on 12 volt sites. Um, so, but I, uh, the other connections I'll be putting in will be cigarette lighters, because they're more universal to change for what you need to plug in. And so that's the main area. The bed sets up by pulling, it used to be, I'd say, by pulling out a piece of wood across here and you used to have the slats that go across. Um, but one of the other negatives on the van is they used to have a plastic runner across here where the bed slats run across. Um, and both sides now broke. This is within a year of getting the van, both of them are snapped off completely and you end up with no bed. So I've had to put these hardwood um, runners in, which have been bolted right the way through. Um, and there we put a piece of MDF across, and that's the same on that side as well. Um, another problem of saving money. It's definitely not down to my weight because I'm only a little person. So, as my wife just said. Um, so, that's mainly this lounge area. I'll show you it set up as a bed, um, and then we'll have a look at the other stuff underneath the van. Alright, so in setting the bed up, we have to take the back cushion out. Again, um, you probably notice that's a bit of MDF down there now. Originally they put a piece of 6mm plywood across that which is the main area where you sit and you lay and 6mm plywood no support underneath it at all just bows and bends and breaks um, so it become a real dip point 
So I've replaced that with a bit of 18mm MDF. And you see the sticky tapes, this is another thing I'll say about the van as well, these sticky tapes, I can take these bits off now. These are the top plastic trims um, that are on cupboard doors and everywhere. Um, nearly all of them have fallen off. It seems like they've used one blob of glue each end um, to glue them on. So I've put that on with um, no, um, Gorilla Glue. So under both beds is the storage areas. I'll just lift them up, show you these. On the right hand side is the man you got the, the tra trauma, uh, not trauma, but trauma piping heating system going round. And at the back is the water tank. Now the water tank on this van is internal. I don't know what it's like before in other vans, but our previous box van it's external underneath the van. So they've done it internally. I expect because uh, working with lower temperatures stop the freezing more. Um, but it is annoying that it takes up quite a bit of room in the van. Which I've never had it freeze, but then we've never been at cuts of cold temperatures. The left hand side, you've got the external battery box, which I showed you earlier, um, and then we've fitted another battery box in here. So this is just a, another ledger battery, it's in its own case. Um, this has been bolted down to the ground. I'll show you another thing on this at another time and how I connect these up parallel. So we've got twin batteries. Um, over there is the Truma heating, this does the hot water and the heating system for the blower heating. Now, one of the good Good things about this is it's great during the day for heating up the van and it's quite fast for heating up the hot water but at night time if you like to have your heating on at night this is right over the top of where one of the people will sleep so it heats up the whole bed and the whole whole bed in area where, you, where your head is and everything so we end up not having to add this on at night plus the fan starts up and it's not noisy during the day but when you're sleeping over the top of this this noise is going through where you're sleeping. So in the end, we've had to install a separate heating system just for night time. So that's the, um, the cushions down. I'll just show you the MDF part that I made up. Now, this is a quite a big bit of MDF. Probably People will probably moan about the weight, that is the extra weight, but realistically, this man could take it. Um, and it makes it so much nicer because what used to happen is if you're sleeping this side, apart from the two bits that broke anyway, this used to sag because the slats of wood they gave you were about, I don't know, less than 10 mil slats. And so they used to bow a little bit, not again, because I'm really heavy, <laughs> but then you used to sag this end and it used to roll off a little bit. So with the MDF there, and that's not, uh, at the 18 mil MDF, it's, it's a much more um, sturdier bed. Now we don't sleep, we put an, um, another memory foam on top of this because I can't sleep on these cushions like this because all the little breaks in the middle and that, um, it's not very comfortable. So we put a bit of MB, um, a memory foam and then the blankets and wet over here and then we have the bed set up. Now again, going back to why we bought the van, we can go back to the lounge area at any point and we do that when we go to seaside to take family out, kids and stuff like that. And then when we go to something like Spain, like we've just done, you've probably seen videos where we've been in Spain, we'll set this whole bed up and that stays set up for the whole holiday, like a fixed bed. So we have the opportunity um, options to be able to go from a fixed bed or a lounge area at any point rather than if a fixed bed permanently I wouldn't be able to switch backwards and forwards. So there you go that's the bed set up. Nice duvet rather than some people used to take, well we used to take sleeping bags that are horrible so now we've got them to duvet um, and like I say underneath here we've got a nice I think it's um, a two inch memory foam that goes over the top of the whole bed um, so it's very very comfortable. We do get quite a nice sleep so it's quite enough comfortable area. Just another thing about the windows and that on these, you've got every single window's got a pull down fly screen and then we've got a pull down blackout screen. The annoying thing is that these are like the old caravan ones which we've had for years, but on our caravan a few years ago we bought a brand new caravan, it had the ones that connect together, a bit like the roof one. So if you see this one where it slides across and then the other one, blackout, connects to it you go across see they did them on the windows on their previous caravan and they're much nicer because they give you complete blackout whereas these ones you will get light that have come through here and this is where your head is so we pull both blinds down just to give you that little bit of gap and someone might give me a tip because one has to do it better because if I bring just that one down there's that much there of light when the sun's coming through, it comes straight onto your eyes when you're sleeping there. So it's a really annoying thing. Um, and there probably is better blinds out there. And so that's about it for the back compartment. Um, and I'll show you some parts of the rest of the van. Um, just a quick one to show you the telly. 
So when we're sitting down, this is our this is our seated area. When we want to sit and watch telly at night with a beer. Um, I know we don't watch telly too much when we go away, because especially when we're in Spain, we're out all the time. But when we're in Ireland, and it's pissing with rain, the telly's quite handy. So now looking at the toilet, on the left-hand side we have the toilet area. Um, one at the bathroom area. One of the nice things I like is that the new ones now, they do have locks. So we have a lock system on this. Which, when it's only two of you in the van, it's not much of a problem. But when we take, we've got teenagers go away, you know, want to lock themselves in the toilets and the bathroom, um, it's quite a handy little feature. It's quite a small bathroom area, to the point I don't think I'll be able to get it all in the video, maybe. Um, but it's, it's dirt, nice, nice, it's usable. So you have a nice, quite a nice sink area with, what, with hot and cold water, same as any other caravan. We've got a shower compartment bit, which has the shower curtain that goes around to protect the toilet from getting soaked. It does mean, yes, all the floor gets soaked when you have a shower. It's not a separate shower and toilet compartment, um, but it's good enough. The cassette toilets, like the standard cassette toilets, but the water system now are connected to the battery rather than having, I don't know if some, some people might remember if they've had some old bands, they used to have a little tiny AA battery for that, which is a pain because it runs out. I have fit, fitted my own little shelving unit because there's not many shelves in the units in here at all. Um, so I put this in, um, and this has a little tiny metal part that you slide up and you take this piece out so you can get to all your bits and pieces and then when you start travelling you can put your bit of wood in there and then everything doesn't fall out um, but it's well worth making yourself a little shelving unit because the compartments in here well, there's one up here which is full up but it's quite high up so it's hard to get into to figure out what you've got in there and then you've got this one down here which aren't that big but still has quite a good storage area um, and the other good thing about it is you've got a full vented roof vent, push, push up vent, roof vent, which is good because I've seen some people with their vans that have no ventilation at all apart from a little hole, which aren't great, um, and LED lighting. Again, great to have LED lighting everywhere because we do try to keep everything on 12 volts. We don't like to have electric hookup all the time. So opposite, the, opposite the bathroom is the cupboard area. Um, the area's got quite a bit of storage area in this van. So down here, we use this as a boot locker. And that goes right to the back of the van, which is that length if you wanna. So we use this for all our boots and stuff. Um, and then you've got the most important cupboard, which is the beer cupboard and cider. There seems to be more cider in here than beer. You see, I don't drink that much. Um, so there's more cider, which my wife drinks, and less beer, if you notice, yeah. I mean, the video says it, it, says it all, really. There's more evidence on the video. Um, than what people say. <laughs> now, but going back down to trims, if you look here, there's another trim coming off. Yeah, hardly any glue on that at all. Um, coming off at the bottom as well. Remember, this is only a few years old. This van. I mean, I would expect this from a like a ten-year-old van. That trim coming off there as well. This this is Swift's way of saving money. Um, this lock we've had to replace when we pushed it in once. It come out completely. There's hardly any screws on the back here, I probably can't see this on the video very well and I've had to know nails out on and glue it on properly um, another <laughs> bit of money saving and up here is the wardrobe this is a nice size wardrobe got all my clothes hanging up in there, all nicely ironed ready for the Twinwood Festival um, and a, a few little one shelving unit there where we put some plastic containers in um, Television aerial is up here, which is standard to most vans. Most caravans and camper vans have these now. And at the back, with most of these, well, oh, there's the booster for the aerial. And at the back there is the solar panel control unit. Not sure how good these are. This is oh, sorry, sergeant controller. Um, so I'm not sure how good they are. Um, I will be replacing that because I want to upgrade our solar panels, give us a bit more power. We've only got 100 watts on top of here. I think I need a bit more than that because we do everything on 12 volts if we can. Um, so I'll probably go for the Vixen chargers and I'll do a video about that. So up the back here is the top compartment. This is the bit that goes over the cab. Um, this is the bit where Sean sleeps. There's a double bed up here. These are nice. It's a nice area here. Um, our last van, um, it would be very claustrophobic up here. We he, he wouldn't be able to sit up at all. He's, he's got quite a nice area. They've got a little light around the corner. 
I don't know if you'll be able to see it, it's a little strip light up there. Um, it could do with an electrical 12 volt socket up here, which it hasn't got, which I've got to install myself, which would have been nice, because he does like to have his phone plugged in when he's up here. Um, it has got a window over the corner, um, which is great when he's in Spain, he has that fully open, and blinds and, su and, and stuff. Um, there's some little tiny storage areas on each side as well, which is handy for your plastic bags, and he puts his little electronic stuff up there. Um, but this is, yeah, very comfortable. These are, these are memory foam again. So it's very comfortable up here. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because we've literally come back from Spain and then gone straight to Twinwood, so we haven't had time to clean the van out. Um, and it has got a net area that you put up when he's sleeping up here. And it's also handy to put up if you want when you're traveling to stop anything from falling down. Um, so these, are, yeah, quite a nice area. Um, this also does go up, this top box, um, allowing the cab area to have a bigger area, but we've never used that really. Right, so this is the kitchen area. Um, again, a nice area. You've got the basic round sink and you've got an extra pull-out piece here for an extra bit of worktop. There's only one power supply, which will probably be standard with most vans, um, but it's good enough really. You can't add too much being near the sink. These extra bits here are things that I've made, again, um, gives you, it's a bit of a wasted space here. And they could have thought something themselves, really. Um, so it's just a little compartment there to put your um, dish cloths and stuff in. Your keys can be hanging up as well. And then you've got a, a, a roll holder, which, again, they could have thought of, because it's always handy. You always need a bit of a roll holder, don't you? Um, nice little window, again, with lines and, and everything on them. Um, another little compartment, again, it's another wasted space that they didn't use, so we put another one in there to put your your wipes and your fairy liquid and especially your oil and stuff which you normally haven't got the lids done properly up so they could tip over when you're driving and there's nowhere apart from the top cupboard which is usually full to put it in um, so up the top we have a microwave this is very very handy it's the first time we've had a microwave on a van um, so we use that quite a bit for doing rice and stuff which is much better done than the microwave we find so it's lovely to have that but only if we've got electric hookup obviously um, the cupboard area over here is, is sufficiently big um, we've made a few bits. These, if you're ever interested, these boxes here are the um, boxes where you put your paper in. It's the paper tidying boxes. I don't know what they're called with the little tiny top bits. I'll try and find some. Um, but we just cut the tops off um, and put them in there. So they're quite handy for storage and stuff. Um, sink standard, hot and cold water. Um, hob, it's quite a nice size hob. We've got the three gas rings. The only thing you don't get with this van, which you get with some vans, is you have electric hobs on some of them. So if you are connected up to electric hookup, you can save yourself on a bit of your gas and use the electric ring. Um, but we don't get that on this. So, But it's not a major problem with us because we don't, like I say earlier, we don't use electric that much. We try to save a bit of money on not using electric. Um, the grill is a oven stroke grill. The oven isn't great. We've used it a few times to try and heat things up and it takes absolutely forever to cook anything and it doesn't really get that hot so that's not great but it's what standard with most vans so you can't really moan about it um, the two cupboards down here they give you these are annoying that used to be in our old van it'd be a bigger oven stroke grill and then you'll have a flip down lid at the bottom to put your stuff in well now they put the drawers in which they probably thought was a nice idea but the problem is there's a lip underneath here and when you're driving along, if these containers flip up a little bit, they get caught behind these lips and you can't open these drawers. To the point where you almost get to the point where you have to physically break the drawer um, to get it apart. So that's a bit annoying. But they're nice sized drawers. You've just got to be very careful in how you store things in it. But one thing I will say with these locks, these pushing locks, they're absolutely brilliant compared to our old van. We used to have some really shitty little locks and used to fly open when you're driving on. So these locks, as long as you remember them, are very, very good. Um, in here, you've got your storage area for your drain. Um, we put some other bits and a couple of bottles we put in there. This would have been nice to have a pull-out piece, and that's something that I'm going to be looking into, where you can pull out something to put your drop bottles in, because these just fly everywhere. And we used to have the bottle of oil down here, and that just fly out. Every time you open the door, it fly out. Um, one drawer for your knife, uh, main knives and utensils and you've got a cutlery drawer up here again these nice little pushing latches and there you go there's a cutlery drawer um, 
yeah, it's a nice kitchen. I'm quite happy with it. So that's about all I can say about the kitchen. Um, got the fridge compartment. These are standard fridges uh, that they fit to the vans. It does the three different supplies: 240, 12 volt when you're on the move, and gas if you're on site. Gas site. They're nice size compartments. Um, it has got the advantage that you can unscrew the top um, compartment up here. It's just a freezer compartment. There's two screws, and you can take that door off. Um, I would normally put it back for this weekend because we're in the UK, but that came off when we went to Spain because in Spain these fridges are absolutely crap. They're just evaporation fridges and they don't like the hot weather. You really need a compression fridge, but that would cost them more money, so they don't fit them. Um, it does have a little latch down here that you can pull out when you can get it out, which I can never get out. No, nah, I'm not going to do it. It's not going to. That's supposed to pull out so that it stops the door from closing when you're in storage and it stops it going mouldy. But it's a pain in the ass to get out, and we hardly ever get it out. So we use, like the old days, you just put a towel in there. Um, but yeah, nice fridges, they look nice. I like the black, it looks nice and clean, um, looks stylish. The only thing I would say one day, if they could ever put compression fridges in, uh, compressor, sorry, fridges in, um, so they can run in hotter countries, because most people are now taking these vans to hotter countries. And so that brings us back round to the other side of the kitchen, to the lounge area. This is like the breakfast area, sorry. This is what we call the breakfast area, the other end was the lounge area. Um, this is where the passengers seat. The main reason why we bought the van, it's got two seat belts over this side for passengers, and we've got two seat belts over that side, so we can take four passengers. So it's nice because we can take our, our my in-laws or um, the, the children's cousins away down to the beach, and we all, they've all got seat belts, we can take four, four people in it, that's quite nice. Um, it does have a table that we leave set up when we're driving along, which means Sean can sit there with his laptop and his music and everything else, so he's happy with the drive. Um, it does go away and go into storage if you need to, um, but it's usually set all the time for us. Down the bottom is a 240 volt power supply over in the corner there. Now, why they put it right over there, God knows, because it's a pain to get to when you've got the table set up. You'd think it'd have been much better off set up here in the middle aisle, so you can actually get to the bloody thing. Um, I have put in a USB 12 volt connection and um, a cigarette lighter over there for Sean's charging points as well, which is mainly put over there for space. Um, these are pullouts over here as well, which then takes another cushion to set up. So you've got the extra, because um, it's a six berth, these are extra two beds each side. Um, we never use it, never set it up, we, ain't, we don't need it. Um, and if you do decide to use it, you have to carry extra cushions, which you have to store somewhere as well. Um, which can be a bit annoying, but I suppose you've got to put them somewhere. Up the top, got again another three nice size cupboards. And this is usually Sean's one we're storing bread this weekend. And you can see I've had to put my own shelving unit again in there because they want to save a bit of money by not putting a piece of wood in for a couple of pence. For them, it'd probably be worth nothing. Here, that one has got a shelving unit, so you know what I mean? It wouldn't have taken much to put shelving units in all of them. Um, again, that one has it, and all the locking mechanisms are really good as well, and they're quite strong. Never have any problems with them flying open when we're driving along. Um, that is also the spotlights, both sides, for the LED lighting, which is nice again, so not have to worry about using too much battery power up. And over the top, we have a roof vent which also is a fan um, which blows in or out depending on what you want and now I'll just show you underneath the both compartments right so both cushions come off from both sides of the passenger area um, allowing you to get into the compartments down here um, this side has mainly the electrics in it there's not much room for storage this is the main 240 volt panel which gives you your polarity um, indication your charging um, indications say that we're charging and your heating side over there um, and over here's your 12 volt um, all your fuses that you might need and it does have some bits and pieces on there um, which I'm not going to go through which um, you can control about how it's charging certain parts of the battery whether it's doing the van battery uh, the motorhome battery etc etc et and it gives you the, va the voltage the actual battery's at at the moment which Mine's showing you it's 13.6 volts. And then over the other side is just a storage area, which is 
there's awkward to get to these storage areas. So we just store the things like the ramps and the spare electric cables, stuff that we don't really need unless we need it, um, unless we pull up first thing on site. Because they have these metal cages in here, which are for the um, protection for the seat belts and the crush loading. And because it's a passenger area, it takes up a lot of the storage space. So all in all, the passenger area, the environment is here for when you're driving along, is very comfortable. You can set this table, like I said earlier, um, lower, we can lower it down and put cushions across, which I've done before because I work night shifts, so sometimes I come off nights and I set this up almost like a bed and I've been able to sleep here quite safely, even with the seatbelt across me um, and it's very comfortable and Sean sat here for hours when we've done long drives and I have as well with my laptop set up watching a film so you can bypass a couple of hours watching the film back in and then take over driving, swap driving between me and Loretta um, so it's quite nice the way that we can do that now and so we can cover a lot more distance um, without getting too fatigued with driving all day. So it's, this is a nice, um, the biggest selling point really was the, the, the four seats here um, and be having a nice comfortable area. We have seen some of the other vans that we looked at where they have their fold up cushions and they have a seat that you pull out and we sat on them and we thought, oh, you're not going to sit on them for two or three hours without having pains in the backs of legs and stuff like that. So you don't have this problem with the lifestyle, it's really nice. So up here, when you come in, you've got two um, coat hooks, which are quite nice to have, um, which I think is different to before. You do have a smoke alarm and you've got a carbon alarm. These are both battery controlled, internal batteries. They're not connected up to the main system of the van. And you'd think nowadays with houses being regulated so that these have to be mains connected, you think these would have been connected straight to the 12 watt leisure battery rather than separately done. It's probably to save money that you can just screw that on that's worth a couple of quid rather than getting the properly connected ones to the van, which would have been more safer. Um, the control panel is pretty good on these. Um, you've got the power on to turn everything on. The water pump on the left, it turns the water pump on and off. The light up here is showing that we're connected to mains for this holiday. Um, and that, another thing to say about this um, one, see this light here, this is light at the back, is showing that we're charging the leisure battery at the moment. And we did make a mistake until we read the manual we push this button over here, it says vehicle ba level, battery levels, we push that, which shows you the vehicle battery levels, but it then shows up this orange light at the front. Now what's happened now is that the mains is charging the front vehicle battery. This, this is the actual engine battery, not the leisure battery, which is a nice idea if you get a low battery and you want to charge that up because they can get low and you won't get this van started, jump starting easily. But it's a pain if you accidentally push that and don't realise it on the manual because you could run your leisure battery down quite quick if you're not on, uh, if you're not charging it. So you have to go over this side and push the leisure battery level and now the backlight lights up. So that's something we found out by reading the manual, which is quite handy. Um, you've got an awning light, external awning light that you push on and off. A frost protection if it's fitted, which um, protects your um, water system from freezing. Um, water levels, which tells you the waste level and the water levels and the battery levels around the thing, and cabin lights, which turns the internal cabin lights on and off. The annoying thing about it sometimes is that you come in here late at night, and if you haven't turned all these cabin lights on and it's pitch black, you never know what button you push. You end up pushing this button over here, like I did earlier, or something, because you don't know what button you push. So we've got a little battery operated light that we flick on, you can take off and you can use it to see what you're doing, which is very handy. Um, and then you've got the TrueMart heating system, which is a great little system, it's quite easy to use. So you push the button, I don't know whether it's showing up, it probably is because it's um, an LED LCD screen. So you push the button, first button to do the temperature within the van, this is the heating system, you set it to whatever temperature you want and then you push the button again and that's set and then that will flash continuously until the van gets up to the temperature that it should be and then you can push it again to turn it completely off like we're doing this weekend um, the next flick of the switch brings up the hot water system again turn it around to either 40 degrees 60 degrees or you can put it on boost which will try and heat it up quite quick which does actually work quite get quite well um, you push the button again to set it I'm not going to do it because I don't want hot water on um, and that will flash until it gets to the temperature. Um, and then you've got what you want to heat the system up. You've got electric two, which is double filaments, electric elements. You've got electric one, which brings it down, to, um, I think it's 
to bring it down to a thousand watts it's just using less wattage on your power um, you've got a mix which means it's mixing between gas and electric which is great if you want to boost and you want to get things up hot quick um, you've got and you've got a mix one which is reducing it again and then you've got pure gas um, so that's the settings that you can use for heating up the van and then you've got a blower motor and this controls ventilation or off is for the oh, there you go ventilation one two I thought it went up numbers which controls the blowers I believe um, which we very rarely use we leave it off um, and that's it there is a bit about the maintenance side but we haven't used um, we are going to get an aircon unit fitted one day hopefully and the trauma trauma <laughs> keep going with trauma trauma system if we get that has a um, Ethernet connection system so it all connects up for a network so you can connect it into this panel and then the, the, if you, you have full climate control rather than just air con or heating you can set it to what temperature you want and then the control system will decide whether it needs to heat the van up or cool the van out depending on what temperature you've set it up to so we're hopefully getting that fitted one day and I'll let you know how that gets on so finally that brings us to the main um, cab area the main hub of the driving area um, so this is the basic Fiat van style of it. This is not built by the Swift. This is built by the Fiat, and it's very, very comfortable area. The seats are lovely, which have probably been upholstered by Swift, and they're quite nice. Um, but all in all, this is a, a, a nice van for driving. So this has the six-speed gearbox, which we said about earlier, which makes it much more economical. This is a manual box. They do do an automatic box, but we've got the manual on ours. It has cruise control, which works quite well in Spain where you have nice long roads with no traffic and you can get in six gear and put it in cruise control in the UK where you'd be lucky to see a road without any traffic so it's hardly ever used um, the steering wheel has controls for the sat nav um, speakers and for the radio speakers and on that side I think it's for the telephone if you've got your telephone connected as well for the sat nav anyone that's wondering if you want to change the volume on your sat nav you have to wait until the sat nav starts talking and then you can change the volume up and down, but you can only do it when the sat nav's talking. If you do it when the sat nav's not talking, it controls the volume of the radio up and down. So that's it worth knowing, because um, we had to look that one up. Um, down there, you you have got. Let's go this side. We have had the Cobra Cat One alarm fitted, which has got the little connection light down here and the button for if we lose your fob. We had to have that fitted for the insurance company. Um, the key system does have a system where you can isolate the van battery completely when it's in storage. Again, another thing we don't really use. Um, the radio, which I haven't got the keys to turn on. Um, you've got the DAB radio as well as normal FM radio, which is nice. The obviously old CD player, near old, near days, because not many people use them. And down here you have a USB port for charging, but that also gives you an auxiliary in for the radio if you want to plug your phone in. But it does have Bluetooth as well, so you can connect your phone through Bluetooth and play music straight into it through Bluetooth as well. Um, it's got built-in sat-nav, which is on the screen, which is a quite a nice sat-nav. It's not the best compared to some of the top-of-the-range ones, but it's, it's good enough for us, really. Um, so I think mean, that's about all I can say about the radio. It's a nice radio. It's a great sound system compared to our old band. We don't have any problems getting made, uh, any, any of the channels either, like we did with the old van. The aerial on the van is very, very good. Um, it's got full climate control which is an automatic climate control, not just air con. Um, it also has a hill descent button, which we've never used, and a traction button, which I don't know what that really does, because I haven't looked it up. Um, if we ever get stuck in the mud, we'll be probably pushing them to try and get us out of the mud, but we do carry big ramps on, on the van, which I'll show you in a minute, because um, we have been stuck in our old van. Uh, and that's it, lock system to lock the van at night, a couple of charging points that we use, for charging up all our laptops in that room in the way. Um, the passenger side has its own little compartment like you get in most vehicles. Um, up here is a storage box. Now someone might tell me you'd say about this differently, but in this storage box, it's got the blower for the heating system going into the box. Um, so when we was in Spain and we had the box closed and we got the aircon on, it was lovely because all our water bottles are in there and it turned out to be like a little cooling fridge area and we had freezing cold water, which is great. And then when you're in other countries where you get the heating on, you could put stuff in there to keep warm. But it's annoying for the heating system when you've got the heating system on and you think, oh, I'll just put my phone in there and 
my cameras and stuff and then you realize that the heating system is just heating up all your electronics which ain't good for the electronics um so i don't know why they put the heating system in there whether it is because it wants to keep a warm when you're warm and cold when you when it wants to be cold i don't know um for rear mirror it's a double camera system um, there's two cameras on the back one shows you when you're driving along everything's behind you and as soon as you put the vehicle into reverse it puts down to a reversing camera it goes straight down so you can see where you're parking which is quite nice the blinds on the front are the pull out ones which again are much better our old van we had an external one that to put on um, but these are nicer because they take less room up in the van and they're easier to put out um, the only downside of them in the UK because of the temperatures you get a lot of condensation inside the van window whereas with the external ones you don't get no condensation at all um, so I think that's about all I can say about the cab area um, it is a lovely vehicle to drive and that's one good thing about it good engine good gearbox and it's a nice quiet comfortable driver right that's it I think We've covered most of it now, um, so that's my review of the Swift van that we've got. Um, we do love it, there's some niggly bits that we don't like. Whether we buy another Swift again, it would be, um, I don't know, we might look at the Apaches, because there are some little bits like the bed falling apart, the external waste thing that fell apart, um, there's other bits and pieces that are starting to fall apart, and this is only a, a, a very, very new van. Um, and you can see where they've tried to ch cut corners everywhere to save a little tiny bit of money, and that little bit of money they're saving has pushed me to think twice about buying a Swift. That's the only downside. Um, but mostly the van, especially the cab, um, is brilliant and the driving of it. So anyway, I hope you liked the review. Um, let us know what you think. If anyone's got one of these, you can let us know if you've had any problems with yours. Um, or if you've uh, done any modifications, let us know. I'll be updating any modifications that I do.